Hi there, my name is Noelle, I am a college junior, and today I want to talk about atypical activism for the common good. Activism applies to a lot of different things. You can be an activist for gay rights, you can be an activist for going against climate change, you can be an activist for the type of wood used in different furnitures. But one thing that we're starting to see more of today as a culture is atypical activism. Now, atypical isn't meant to be a constraint, it's simply a sort of terminology like young adult literature. Just like books belong to their readers, different atypical terms belong to the person they are representing. So today I want to talk about OCD, which is Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, specifically in the book Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. Aza is the main character of this book, and she suffers from OCD. However, I think this book is a good uh, representation of activism for atypicals because the story isn't centered on her illness. It's a story, it's a mystery story, and she's going on an adventure and she's trying to solve it. And at times, her illness hinders her, but she perseveres through and she continues pushing. At times, her thoughts can be all-consuming. On the front page of this book is a spiral, because a lot of people with OCD suffer from thought spirals. So they start thinking about one thing, and that thought gets out of control, and it starts to spiral and get tighter and tighter and tighter until it's all that person can think about. And there's a very good quote on page 166 that I want to read. It's when Aza is with her therapist, and they're having a therapy session. And her therapist tells her, But you give your thoughts too much power, Aza. Thoughts are only thoughts. They are not you. You do belong to yourself, even when your thoughts don't. And I think that's a striking quote, because at times things can be confusing, especially when you're still trying to find your identity. And if you have been given some of these outside atypical labels, it can be even harder to figure out who you are but you are who you want yourself to be. I think that more and more young adult literature books are representing atypical characters, be it characters with autism, or characters with mental illnesses, or characters with disabilities, and I think that is a fantastic thing. I am someone who has social pragmatic communication disorder, which is very similar to Asperger's, and I also have different mental illnesses and disabilities. And up until I took Young Adult Literature with Professor Hassa Brooks, I hadn't necessarily identified with many characters in books. However, as the years progress, I find myself being able to identify more and more with those on the page. As they say, books belong to their readers, and I think it is especially important when atypical characters can be represented, not just for that person, because they're able to finally identify with someone in a book, but it's also important for those who aren't atypical, for those who are neurotypicals or able-bodied, and those who are well-minded. Because it's important for them to know what it's like to walk in another person's shoes. And so I think young adult literature is doing a fantastic job at that recently. Thank you!